Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna talk to you guys today about how to best spend your FIFA points, especially the 4,600 FIFA points that a lot of people are getting for pre-ordering the Ultimate Edition. I think there's two different ways that you can do this, but I also wanna talk about the market impact when these FIFA points will be made available to us, and if you're just buying FIFA points to start off the game, what you can do with those and what you should do with those in my opinion opinion. So, of course, FIFA 22 is rapidly approaching, and a lot of us pre-ordered that Ultimate Edition. So, on September 27th, those 4,600 FIFA points will be given out to basically everybody who pre-ordered the game. That is the date that we expect to see those 4,600 FIFA points given out to everybody. That's going to be a crazy day on the market. I want to talk about that a little bit later. If you're just buying FIFA points straight up, or if you're transferring from FIFA 21 to FIFA 22, you are gonna be able to access those FIFA points as early as September 22nd on the EA Play Access. The first time you log into FIFA 22, it will ask you, do you wanna transfer your FIFA points over? You can say yes and you will have those FIFA points right away. So that's why EA Play, the 10-hour trial time, is big for the market. That's going to be a crazy day as well. But if you bought FIFA points, you already had them loaded up, that's how you're going to be able to access those, and you'll be able to use those right away from the 22nd on the EA Play 10-hour uh, trial. But for a lot of us that run RTG accounts that just pre-ordered the game this year, these 4,600 are going to be coming on the 27th and here's the thing i think there's two different ways you can go with this i really think there is number one the easiest thing to do and i think is going to be the most efficient thing to do the 27th is still early enough that a lot of those low tier cards are going to be still decently expensive we think about guys uh like we've already seen some ratings right about lacroix lacroix's card 79 rated or whatever it is with 88 pace of course, he was a silver in FIFA 21, but this kind of card is going to be going for a decent amount right away to start the game. Or a Klosterman, another item that is very hyped up, a cheap beast or starter card, if you will. Those are going to be cards that are going to make it worth your while for opening FIFA points early on. And that's the argument here. Opening your FIFA points as early as possible is the best value because with these 4,600 FIFA points that you're going to get, that allows you to open up 30, yes, 30 of the 7.5K packs. And the store in FIFA 22 is going to look a lot like this because we will have preview packs, which I want to talk about as well. But you're going to be able to rip through 30 of these 7.5K packs, which we did the math yesterday on stream. It's going to easily come out to somewhere between 55, 60, maybe even 75K plus, depending on who you pack from those packs. Uh, it's it's not it's not bad at all. It's basically what it is, is it's very similar to the division rivals coin boosts that we had last year. But instead of instead of them just giving you the coins and have no supply come on the market this year, you're opening packs and those coins are coming onto the market via supply. So it's going to be a crazy day on the market on the 27th when everybody gets their 4,600 FIFA points. But I still think that is the best thing to do. I would log on. When you get those FIFA points, just go into here and rip 7.5K packs. There is a little bit of an argument for saving those FIFA points to open up preview packs you know, throughout the year. But in my opinion, uh, we did get information about preview packs confirmed yesterday in the pitch notes. And there will be, just like there's in the store in FIFA 21 right now, the 7.5K pack will be on a 24-hour refresh timer but in my opinion if you're just trying to get coins and coins are king early on i would just rip the straight up packs right away also this is huge there's a non-preview version as well so you don't have to preview every single pack and then buy it you can just do the normal the old way if you will just buy it and then open the pack and you have whatever you get from it so that's nice for the efficiency process of getting those pa uh, packs and FIFA points open quickly, but I think that's the best way. I think that's the number one thing to do is to rip those FIFA points right away because the early part of the game, I always say this, is that if you're going to buy FIFA points and spend FIFA points on this game, the number one time to do it is in the first two weeks because those low rated cards go for more. Everything sells on the market for more on the lower tier end, which is what you pack most often in this game 
it sells for the most in the first two weeks. So that's why we recommend that. Now, there are a couple other options. Of course, people talk about foot draft. Now, you'd have to play a lot of foot drafts, 300 FIFA points. So I guess 15 foot drafts is what you would be able to do with your 4,600 FIFA points and or around 15 foot drafts. So, I mean, if you're an elite level player and there's rumors that the rewards for foot draft have been upgraded, there's been a couple tweets put out and, you know, we'll see what actually happens with this because uh, EA has not spoken about it to us, but there has been some rumors about some certain guaranteed 83 pluses. And if they're doing this with foot draft, hopefully they do it with like division rivals rewards and foot champs rewards as well to kind of, I guess, tier the rewards even more to especially some of those elite and top tier players that feel like they get screwed over with rewards every single week. So this could be, could be if you're an elite level plus player, something that you do with your FIFA points as well. Now, the only problem with this is that it takes more time. And if you don't win, then that sucks. But also, this is going to be a mode that is filled with all of the pros, all of the elite level players, because they know they can win in this mode. And it's going to be worth it for them to learn the game by grinding it and by getting these rewards, especially if there's potential for them, for those rewards to be upgraded and juiced. So, I think that this would be the place to go if you are an elite level FIFA player and that's about it. For most of us, especially traders, if you're trying to just get coins on your account right away, I would go in here and I would rip the 7.5k packs right away. Again, I really don't feel like it's worth it to try to save your FIFA points to open preview packs or, or to even save for ones to watch. I don't feel like that's worth it either because, you know, once we get to ones to watch, there's a big, there's, there's like... Uh, I think they even do lightning rounds or promo packs on that day. Not really big ones like 50Ks or 100Ks, uh, but there's just a ton of supply on that full release date of October 1st because some people just wait to open their packs because they want to pack ones to watches. And I mean, I think for your coin value, the most efficient way to do it, I would open those FIBA points as soon as you get them. Now, let's talk about this. When people open those FIBA points on that 27th date, it's going to be crazy. This day, the 27th of September, is going to be a massive, massive day on FIFA because there's going to be tons of supply. Now, the high tier cards on the game are already going to be going up because people are going to be opening FIFA points with EA Access, EA Play, and people are going to be grinding games, getting rewards. This will be five games after, five days after the EA Play time has begun so you're going to see the market already up swinging and some of the low tier cards i can already see it happening like vertongan like pepe some of those starter tier starter players that are in squads are going to start going down and they're going to have a nice dip on the 27th of september what i think is going to happen is whenever these fifa points are released there's going to be two different things to happen. Number one, players like a, a low-rated, very meta player, like an Alan St. Maximin, maybe a Lacroix. Um, let's we'll, we'll figure it out as we get more players released and revealed officially. But some of your most meta cards, Renato Sanchez, 80-rated, that's a big one. That'll be a big card that will act a lot like St. Maximin did last year. If you take a look at this graph, which we're going to zoom way back in time, uh, to the middle of October, just to zoom in on this. You can see from the start of the game, St. Max is about 50K. Last year, it was Tuesday, October 6th was the full release date, and we didn't even have... Uh, this dip that you see on October 6th was just from people getting on to the uh, full game from pre-ordering it and opening FIFA points they bought. This right here has nothing to do with FIFA points that were given out. On the game so i think what you're going to see on the 27th is a big drop on the low tier part of the market a lot of starter cards are going to die in price because they're going to get packed so much and a lot of your lower tier meta cards are going to get supplied as well but then they're going to kind of go back up a lot of cards that are in this 40 50 60k range are cards that people will be upgrading to over the next couple of days and i think you're going to see a nice bounce after that, as you can see on the same Maxman, he went from 61K down to 49 on the Xbox, from basically 60 to low 50s on the PlayStation, and then rebounded back up above 60K and then kept going. But he was also out of packs uh, because he had a Team of the Week item and Team of the Week 2. So there's a little bit of that in there. But I do think, I honestly do think that you will see on a lot of the meta cards, even if it's a, a higher rated meta 
player. I mean, I'm talking about somebody like even at the beginning of the game last year, like Mares was pretty, pretty meta. Ricardo Perea is a pacey right back. Marcus Rashford, right? Let's take a look at Rashford at the start of the game last year. These guys are really going to go up because a lot of coins are going to be put on the market that day and people are going to go out and buy some of these high tier players that they weren't able to afford before. So that, that uh, Tuesday, the sixth date, you can see his price wasn't even really affected. He just kept going up went down a little bit into the full game release, and then it went up even further after that as people realized that uh, Rashford was really, really, really OP, kept rising into November. So for your high tier meta cards overpowered, like your Rashford, your Sonaldo, your Mbappe, your Neymar, they're literally just gonna keep rising, maybe a slight dip uh, after that 27th date, but then you're also gonna have your low tier meta get supplied, rebound back, but other cards, the starter cards that I was mentioning, like Vertonghen, maybe Pepe, um, those cards that are really not going to be used too much outside of the first month of FIFA Ultimate Team, some of your rare golds that are below 80 rated that are just starter cards in all, in, in all honesty, you're going to see some of these actually go down big time in price because they're just going to get supplied so much and the demand for these cards is not going to be there as much. Now you could say, yo, Nate, there's still going to be people getting onto the game for the first time. Well, yes, but so many people are going to be able to, the, the, the combination of these lower rated cards and um, this is even an 83 rated port too, so not even the best example, but his graph shows you what happens. You can see that on the 6th, he went down a little bit with supply and then boom, dropped big time into the weekend. There's going to be a lot of those low rated cards that are going to get destroyed. I'm going to go on a limb here and search for Kamara if I can find him. Maybe maybe it's not going to pull it up for me. But um, the Kamara left back from the um, League One. He was a card last year that was like a starter left back. I just want to look up his card. It's probably not going to be easy to find. GG's Nate for trying to do this. Oh, boom. There he is. Hassan Kamara, 77 rated left back. What happened to him right away? I bet he dropped off in price a lot in that first week after all the supply came in. Let's see how this goes. Boom, there it is. You can see he peaks early on in the first week of EA play, EA access, and then just keeps dropping and drops a lot after the sixth, right? Goes up to 2K. I know the price is really cheap here, but that's the kind of thing I'm gonna expect with some of these lower tier cards that are like starter items as we get into the beginning of FIFA 22. So again, some of those starter items, you know, we talk about maybe even Ben Godfrey. Ben, ben Godfrey with 77 rated being a non-rare could be a very interesting one. He's going to get supplied a decent amount uh, because he's a non-rare as well. Maybe a guy like um, Furpo right there. That's a decent starter card. People might only use him for the first couple weeks on the game. But of course, as we get more and more, we might get the full database today on Friday. Who knows? I'm not, in, not sure what's going to happen today on Friday. But that is kind of the, I guess, idea that you can wrap your mind around and expect is that it's going to be a crazy day of supply. There are going to be a ton of coins put onto the game that day because so many people are going to be doing packs and getting coins. At the very least, if you open 30 of these packs, you're getting like 50K quick sell value. So you're like guaranteed 50,000 coins. So it is very similar to the Division Rivals coins boost that we got last year. We don't have them this year. But there's no place matches. Everybody starts in Division 10, if you did not know that. But the same sort of like market inflation afterwards is still going to take place, in my opinion, because I think you're going to see a lot of people get those coins from their uh, FIFA points and go out and, and buy some players and upgrade their team. So that is very interesting, and you're going to see a nice uptick. I would really watch informs when we get to that stage. When we get to that 27th date, I would really, really watch out for informs because Team of the Week 1 would be going out of packs literally the day after that. The Wednesday after that, if Team of the Weeks are still on Wednesdays, as far as we know they are. I would really watch Team of the Week 1 cards getting supplied that day and the meta ones going up as people buy them for their teams and going out of packs. And as well, I would keep an eye on uh, out of packs cards that are supposed to get Team of the Week 2. So... It's going to be a crazy, crazy day on that 27th. I'm super for it. Also, Foot Heroes, Icons, I would watch big time on those cards those days. If you're somebody that has a decent amount of coins, by the time we get to that date, it'll be a great time to trade with those and flip those too because they'll still be very rare, but they'll get supplied a little bit. But also, people will have a lot more coins to go out 
and buy those. So that is my opinion on how you should spend your FIFA points. I'm going to be ripping my FIFA points right away on the full day of the game, as a lot of you guys are going to be doing. Then we're going to get into the market, buy some stuff, and watch it go up. It's going to be a great fun. Uh, and if this video helped you at all today, make sure to leave a like on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. It has been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.